Good morning, dear friends and family in Christ. It's a privilege to be able to sit with you around the Word of God. We're busy with our series on the I Am. Sayings of Jesus where He proclaimed I Am. Today we're going to look at John 10 verse 11. Where He says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd who lays down my life as a sacrifice for the sheep. You see, the Good Shepherd lays down His life. God is the good shepherd. God is good. He's good all the time. That's why the gospel means good news. It is good news that Jesus, the good shepherd, was willing to die for us in our place. And the fact, in fact, he says, he says, the fact that he says, I am the, the good shepherd implies that there are other shepherds that's not good. Implies that they are fakes, thieves. And Jesus says in John 10 verse 1, listen to this eternal truth. The person who sneaks over the wall to enter into the sheep pen, rather than coming through the gate, reveals himself as a thief coming to steal. Now Jesus is talking about our spiritual enemy, here, Satan. He is the prince of darkness. He hates God. He hates God's people. And his mission is to steal, kill, and destroy everything and everyone created by God. Just look at what the world looks like. What's going on outside? Many people are sick. Families are falling apart. Marriages are in trouble. Children, young people are making bad decisions and live just like they want to. And I believe the root of all this evil in the world is the thief and the robber. In fact, Jesus spells it out clearly. John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I've come that you may have life, that you may have it more abundantly. You see, Jesus uses this metaphor of shepherd and sheep to portray his relationship with you and me. We are the sheep and the shepherd's heart is that you and I will have life in abundance. It's interesting that the sheep is the most mentioned animal in the Bible. I think it's almost 200 times. Now is this good news? I don't know. Decide for yourself. Because sheep are considered as very stupid animals. You don't see a sheep doing tricks in a circus. I've seen dogs and elephants and horses and tigers and lions. I've even seen flies. On YouTube, there's a program, uh, a, a video uploaded by David Attenborough and the flea circus. So they can teach even a, a flea uh, a, a trick. But sheep are not easily trainable. And there are four challenges being a sheep. And see for yourself this morning how you fit in, the in this story and how we are just like sheep. You see, sheep get lost very easily. And the ladies will probably agree that the aspens often get lost. They don't want to ask for directions. They think they know better and they know the way. They are all like that. But Isaiah 53 says that we have all gone astray like sheep and all have gone our own way. So that I see that sheep are defenseless. Other animals have various defense mechanisms like horns, teeth, nails. Some stink, some has camouflage, other kick or fly away. But sheep are defenseless. And on our own, without the body of Christ, without, without the armor of God, without the protection of the good shepherd, we are also very, very vulnerable to the lies of the enemy, the devil. So many of us are like sheep. We, be lie, we believe these lies. And we live a life that leads to death and destruction because of his lies. But sheep are also very stubborn. I want to ask you, look to the person next, next to you, sitting next to you and tell him. He's, talk, he's talking about you right now. Tell him that. Go ahead, do it. Tell him, you're kind of sheepies. You're incredibly stubborn. Tell him that. 
I can see some of you aren't doing it. I'm talking to you. You are stubborn. I told you what to do and you not doing it. It's the same. The word of God tells us a lot of things. Gives us direction in life. But so many of us wants to debate what God says in his word. Wants to interpret what God says. No, it's not for today. It was for the old church. It was for the old days. Now, no, 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 no. We are to civilize today. We cannot adhere to the word of God. No, God doesn't actually mean that. And we would want to try and put our own feelings into the Bible. Our own words to suit us. We are stubborn. We don't want to listen what God says. And we also pay the price for that. What I also see, sheep are dirty. They smell. They do not have the ability to clean themselves. And I say this very respectfully, but that's how you and I are in the eyes of God. We are filthy. We are sinners. We've heard a lot. Oh, so-and-so is a good person. In the eyes of God, no one is good. All of us. Fall short, all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. We are far from God's standard of holiness. Therefore, we need a shepherd. We need a savior. We need the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us, to make us whole, to make us clean, to make us new. We need Jesus. Without him, we are vulnerable to the lies of the devil. That's why it's really good news when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Now, there are four amazing qualities regarding the shepherd that I want to point out this morning. And I trust that it will connect to your heart and your daily life. The good shepherd leads. Psalm 23, he leads me to green pastures. You see, when you seek the face of the Lord in difficult times or decisions, he will guide you. John 10 verse 3 to 4 says, And the sheep recognize the voice of the true shepherd. For he calls his own by name and leads them out. For they belong to him. And when he has brought out all his sheep, he walks ahead of them and they will follow him. For they are familiar with his voice. I know you may say, but I've never heard God's voice. Well, God speaks. He speaks through his word. He speaks through the Holy Spirit and through people. Through nature. You just have to want to hear his voice. But there are only two reasons why people don't recognize the voice of the shepherd. I want to illustrate it. Suppose you walk with me into a room where 50 ladies are talking simultaneously to each other. Because that's what women do when they're together. They talk. So if I ask you, could you identify my wife's voice? Your answer would probably be no, I can't. There are just too many voices. But the reason, the real reason why you can't recognize a voice is one or two reasons. You've never met her before or you've not spent enough time with her to recognize, to recognize her voice above the 49 other ladies. But let me tell you one thing. You can leave me blindfolded into that same room and I will only walk through once and then walk straight to my wife. Why? Because after 38 years, I spent so much time with my wife and heard her voice so many times that I will recognize it every way. So if you do not hear the voice of the good shepherd, it is because you've not met him yet or because you spent too little time with him to recognize his voice. So the good shepherd knows you. He calls you by your name. We serve a personal God who's personally interested in you. And it's important that someone knows your name and calls you by name. I like to call people by name and try, try, always try to memorize their names. I will ask it two times or three times and then I'll, I'll do my best to memorize it because you feel important when someone calls you by name. You're not just a number. You are somebody. So you want to be called, recognized by your name. See, God wants to reveal himself to you. Therefore, he calls you by the name. He wants to show you 
that you are important. So when you have to make difficult decisions, ask the Lord in prayer and quote his word. Pray, Lord, your word says you are the good shepherd who knows the sheep by their name. Lord, please help me to recognize your voice. Lord, help me in my decisions. Lead me, I will follow. Lord, you are the shepherd. Please go before me. Show me the way in Jesus' name. Amen. The second thing the shepherd does is he provides. David says it's so beautiful in Psalm 23, verse 1 to 3. He says, the Lord, I, I'm, I'm quoting from the Passion Translation. He says, the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd. I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. He is struck. He, uh, his tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brooks of bliss. That's where the restores, that's where he restores my and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Now I like this imagery because I see the I can I can picture it in my mind. In the Karoo, you only see sheep resting when it has eaten enough. When its thirst has been quenched and when it feels safe. So in the presence of the good shepherd, we are cared for. Our thirst quenched and we can rest in his protection. So decide in whose presence you want to be. If you're rushed by storms and, and, and tired or overloaded, the invitation stands this morning. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Are you weary? Carrying a heavy burden? Come to me. I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. You see, as a sheep in the care of the shepherd, all hell can break loose around you, and everything can go wrong. Yet, you can experience peace. Yet, you can know the shepherd is watching, is guarding over you. He's your provider. He takes care of the sparrow. He will take care of you too. Thirdly, the shepherd corrects. It may not sound like good news, but when a sheep wanders off and gets lost, the shepherd goes to fetch him and brings him back to safety. Why? Because the shepherd loves him. Because he cares and he lay down his life for his sheep. Listen how well Job puts this in Job 5, 17 and 18. He says, Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. Therefore, do not despise the chastening of the Almighty. For he bruises, but he binds up. He wounds, but his hands and makes whole. You and I are truly blessed because the shepherd cares enough, enough that he corrects you. He brings you back when you've lost your way. I've read somewhere that when a lamb wandered off in the days of old and and became a prey for wolves. The shepherd would go and search for him. When he finds the lamb, he will give it a blow with, with the shepherd's staff. This blow will crack the, 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 the lamb's leaf bone. Now it sounds cruel, but the, but the shepherd then put the sheep, picks up the lamb and he puts him on his shoulders and carries him. Then he cares for it until his lamb is healed. And for the rest of that lamb's life, he will stay close to the shepherd because he has formed a special bond with this shepherd. What a beautiful picture of our Lord. Sometimes he needs to correct us, but that's only to put us into his arms of care. Lastly, I see the shepherd protects. The shepherd guides, he provides, he corrects, and he protects us. This is what Psalm 23, 4 says. He says, Lord, even when your paths take me, um, take me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I will never be lonely for you are near. 
You see, because my good shepherd is close to me, I will not be afraid. His weapons are at my disposal. Psalm 23, 5 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. See, oil was poured over the sheep's head to water flies that irritated the sheep. Now the sheep, the shepherd, even takes care of little things in life that irritates you and me. Therefore, my cup runs over. My cup is overflowing. There's a tradition in the Old Testament Palestinian houses where you may stay at the table of the host as long as the host refills your cup with wine. As long as your cup was full, you were welcome in the house. But once you stopped refilling it, it was a, it was a sign. It's time to leave. You must go now. Now David says, my cup runs over. In other words, I am always welcome in the presence of the good shepherd. It's not only for it runs over. It overflows. So I'm always welcome in the presence of the good shepherd. It's just how good it shows you how good it is. It shows how much he loves me. Now, all of us listening this morning may know Psalm 23. Our children learn it from an early age. It's probably the song that's most sung at at, at, at funerals. But the question this morning is not whether you know Psalm 23. I want to ask you, do you know the shepherd of the Psalm 23? Do you have a relationship with a shepherd? Listen, he wants you to know him. The thief comes to steal and kill, but he comes so that you can experience life in abundance. And we are all our sheep. We all need the care of a shepherd. Without his care and presence, we are prey to the enemy, to the liar that roams around looking for whom he can devour. If a shepherd speaks to you this morning, I would like to pray with you. Father God, Abba, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you. Father, for being like a good shepherd. We thank you for your caring love. We thank you, Father God, that, that you take care of us. That we can hear and yield to your voice. This morning, I'm asking, Father God, for those who have opened their hearts, for those sitting and say, Father, I can't hear your voice. For those sitting in a storm this morning, laying probably maybe in a, in, in, in a hospital bed, Father God, would you reveal your heart to them this morning? Would you come into their circumstances and let them hear your voice? In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.